Hello, 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 and welcome everybody to the CNC with Dave Yen show. And I think we may be streaming to a different place on YouTube because I don't see it working over there on YouTube. Uh, no, I don't see it working either. Let me see. Uh, ask for some input. Uh, we will take a quick look here and see if it popped up live with a different stream. It just popped up live on mine. Let's see something. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it over there. We are live on Twitch. I see. But I don't see, don't look like we're live on Facebook or YouTube yet. Hmm. Marlo says it's in a different space. It's in a different window. I just posted the link in the inside chat here. Okay. Inside chat? Okay, hang on a second. Let me, uh, let me set. You want me to send the other people there? Uh, yeah, I was trying to see if I could copy this and put it down here in the, or put it over in the chat. Okay, there we go. Yep. Yeah, we know it says it's waiting for me, but I was afraid this might happen because this is my first time using that restream and I wasn't sure if I was doing it exactly right. So I'm going to click on that link. Yeah, that's where we're at. We're over there. So I still don't see it on Facebook, but we're live on Twitch. Okay. I, uh, We'll, I'll keep checking with Facebook periodically and see. But anyway, we're live in a couple of places. <laughs> so uh, it'll take a minute probably for the uh, chat to catch up with us. I hope the chat's now going to come in. Yeah, it looks like it is. All right. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sending everybody over there. Oh, it, looks like, it looks like the chat that I'm getting is from the other place. Uh, oh, it's going to be fun. I'm not in the new chat. Do you hear, do you see my posts? I don't see anything. Uh, all I'm seeing is the, the chat, the chat that was going from the last time. Okay, because I, I, I've been posting, like every other chat, I've been posting the link that Mark just said. Uh, if you don't see that, then you're in the right chat, and they just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, they. Marlo Swedinski says two chats going. Um, Dave, is there any way you can close the first one? Uh, or you can go to the first one and pull up the chat from that on the pop-out chat window. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm looking yeah, at the I first see the, I can see the current chat over here off of YouTube, but I'm not getting it. But the I'm one not. with me in it or the one or the other one? Because I, I haven't gotten to the new chat yet. I haven't clicked on that. Well, I'm seeing the new chat on I'm seeing, YouTube, but I'm not seeing I'm the new chat on. Uh, oh, on the, on the live stream? On the. On your, what's that thing called? Stream yard. Yeah, stream yard. And I don't, I don't see it showing up as a live on Facebook. We are on Twitch. And of course, I never use Twitch. So there's probably not anybody over there. Uh, I'm going to put a message in. Uh, just a test. Yeah, see that popped up right here in this chat. So the, the chat from Twitch is working. 
And I don't even know if there's a way to see if anybody's watching over there. But yeah, the YouTube. Okay, I switched I over to the new chat. Uh, everybody's in the new chat. So uh, now, can you see it on StreamYard? No, I think. Oh, wait a minute now. Yeah, maybe that maybe they have moved. Okay, I think I think maybe it's caught up with us here. Because we see Keith pounding through you, got you. Okay, I think I think we're good now. I think we've got at least the chat from YouTube on the right one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I see the same. Yep. I see the you same. Got the, you got the right one. You got the new one. Okay, so it's yeah, it finally caught up somehow. Uh, just a little glitch there, folks. <laughs> uh, love this new uh, new new technology here. It must have been something I did when I set it up. I'm not I'm not sure how that how that works. Anywho, thank you all for uh, coming here, and I'm gonna look here. Yeah, there's no. Uh, okay, see, I see how it works now. I've got to go back and edit the video on YouTube to put all the stuff in the description because it's there's nothing there and it was all in that other one. So anyhow, let's get on with the show and we'll we'll uh, work the kinks out as we go here. But uh, thank you everybody for uh, for tuning in tonight. Um, we're going to have a pretty slick show. I think we've got Mr. Rob Schuster. Uh, hey. To talk about his newfangled, let's see, what do you call it? The custom, I have it wrote down here, custom rotary drum CNC machine. And I got, I, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest, uh, Rob, when you first sent me a few pictures a while back, I don't know if you remember that, you sent me some yeah. pictures about, and you were just kind of working on it at that time. And I'm looking at those pictures, trying to wrap my head around what the heck you're building <laughs> and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense until you sent me some stuff where it was a little more farther along later on and then that's when i thought man that's just a fantastic piece of uh engineering as far as i'm concerned um but anyway before we get really wound up talking about that i do want to remind everybody uh, probably somewhere around nine o'clock ish, we'll be doing the random drawing for the license plate guitar that I'm going to be giving away tonight. Um, so we're going to uh, do that. And also, I want to remind everybody about the, um, the challenge I got going on um, the ridiculous stepper motor knob <laughs> challenge um already got some folks I, i've got two videos so far i've added to a playlist i know there's some other folks working on it because i've seen some of the stuff they posted on facebook so uh that should be pretty cool to see what everybody comes up with on that anywho uh let's get uh, let's get talking about this this drum thing i've got uh, i was telling rob before we went live here that um I had was watching his video uh, yesterday or the day before, and I started jotting down some questions, and I finally stopped with about 20. Uh, so um, where do you want to start, Rob? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we can. Well, I'm going to. Uh, you pick a topic, and I'll go from there. There's a lot to cover. I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen here. And I think, yeah, that's going to squeeze all of us over here. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of start with some of these pictures. Uh, and you can just describe what we're looking at here. Okay, that's uh, oak, stave shell. Uh, stave, just our strips up and down, they glue together. There's actually a website out there that helps you calculate the size. Um, it's Google Stave Drum Calculator. And it comes back to get a 14 inch drum it says to make a two and a, i think it's like two and a quarter inch on the outside and it's an 18 degree angle 
You cut down the, like my uh, table saw, a couple of strips, and then a uh, little beach joint. We got uh, big hose clamps or air conditioning clamps, I think, technically. You hold it tight. Yeah, there you go. And it makes a perfect circle. Actually, the first time I measured it was a sloppy big, so I actually took a few hundreds off each time on each stage to get the exact right size. Yeah, 18 degrees into 360, 20, 20 okay, seconds. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me get, uh, I was trying to figure out a way to get these in, in some kind of order. So that's, so that's how the drum starts off, basically like, like that. You just glue it up. Um, and then let's see where we want to go here. Well, I think we've already showed something like this. You can see your big old clamps. And this, at this point, what diameter is that? Oh, it's about a little over 14, like, like 14 and an eighth, I think it was. And, and technically, if you had a 14 inch drum, you actually want 13.875 because the drum head is 14. And it's got to fit around it. So you want a smidge slack. So it's, it's actually 13.875. Okay. And let's see here. I wanted to try to find, I probably should make these. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Or not. Well, hmm. all right. My pictures are getting screwy here. Well, let me just start with this right here then, because I think we can bring this one up. Then scroll back and forth. Um, so this is how you've got it wired. Of course, it's a, a three axis machine. Right. Uh, just using the X, Z, and A, and it looks like, I'm not sure I can tell from this picture. I think one of these other ones was a little bit Clear, I thought. Oh, there we go. Using the DM five forty two T drivers from Stepper Online. Um, you know, just tell us, just tell us what uh, what you got going on here in this photo. Yeah, yeah, I did all the Stepper Online stuff. The the uh, Stepper motors or the four sixty, whatever the ones, the popular ones out there. Um, I forgot how many watts, volts the uh, power supply is, but it was step around line again, too. Um, I basically copied, I found people that worked on the internet and copied what they did. I, I'm not an electrical engineer to figure all that stuff out. And a basic breakout board that's 20 bucks, I don't remember what it was, a cheap one. That's a lot of people use it out there, had high ratings. Is that, that one of those uh, sane smart breakout boards? That sounds right. Okay, I mean, it looks like what I've seen on Amazon. Yeah, I got it from Amazon. It had great ratings and a lot of sales, or a lot of, a lot of reviews. Uh -huh. And I have to, I have to say, you're a much neater wiring person than I. <laughs> Mine looks like spaghetti. <laughs> if you saw my other machine, you would not, you'd retract that statement real fast because my uh, shoestring is, uh, it's not good at all. Yeah, but this one, this one looks really nice. You, the way you've got the wire ties and everything's nice and neat, even labeled. Uh, that uh, that's pretty slick there. Let me try to roll on through some of these others. You know, uh, what what size power supply? They're asking in the uh, chat there. Uh, oh gosh, five hundred. Does that make sense? I don't remember now. It's, I did it quite a few months ago, and I'm. I can I, I can't pull it up right now. But I think is it five hundred watt? Does that make sense? Or five hundred? Yeah. Yeah, that. Many, see, five hundred watts would be about four five a.m. I have to pull the invoice again. I don't remember now. Yeah. That was a long time ago. I've been yeah. outside of the mind. Yeah. All right, so. Like I said, I'm trying to go through these pictures here. This is kind of a, a shot of the whole machine. Uh, 
and I, somewhere on here, let me see if I can find it. Well, that was kind of it. You hear again on the side, I like the way you made kind of a caddy uh, with all your drivers and power supply. And then on the back side here, it, you had your computer mounted. Right. And I thought that was pretty cool the way that just hooks on and you just kind of lift it off. I think I've got a picture somewhere. Again, y'all have to forgive me because I don't have these in any kind of. Space. Space is real premium in our garage. It has to roll in the corner uh, to make room for, well, my wife's car. That's important. That, uh, yeah, here's, popular here's, car in the garage, so. yeah, here's the shot I was looking for where it's right here in this caddy and you even got a power strip here and you just kind of lift it off and set it down. And, and I want, and when you watch the video too, you can pull this out and you know, you had it up against the wall. So it didn't really take up much space at all. It's not, the footprint of this whole machine is, is how big? About 20 inches, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, I thought it looked like it was really tight to the wall when you pull it out, but, uh, all right, now let me get back to that other picture. Let's let's stop it. Uh, well, let's let's go right here, I guess, where you're doing the outside, because I, I notice you're going to have to. Or I, I'm assuming. You correct me if I'm wrong here, but it looks like your your process of operations or order of operations is you start and do the outside first. Exactly. And I get Several roughing passes, and each roughing pass I take off like an eighth of an inch each rotation. And then the final roughing pass, I think that photo there is the final one. Where I'm taking off like two hundredths each pass. So it comes out really clean there. It doesn't really need to be sanding at all. Like it comes out real nice. It's a ball nose, half inch ball nose. Right. Okay. What was your step what was your step over uh, uh, Rob out of curiosity? So each pass about two hundred twenty thousandths. Is that your nice. Okay, so you so you do the outside and then in the in the picture that I saw that drum had kind of like a big groove in the middle of it. Yeah, it's, I just had for cosmetics. Yeah. So that would you would do that also, I guess, before you switch to doing the inside. I guess the inside's probably the last step you're gonna do, right? Yeah, so for the outside, first I get the, the shape right, the smooth. Then I cut on each edge where the end will be. So I don't cut all the way through, obviously, so I cut through and fall off the jig. But I, I do a nice a cut, uh, a quarter inch thick. And then I actually put a round over bit and finish that bit, uh, the edge, the outside edge, which the drum needs a round over, a rounded edge there. And I drill the holes for the lugs, which lugs the drum term, but just like a car, we have rims and lugs, but but to the holes drill through it to hold the the lugs. The uh, you can see it there. That'll go on there and drill the holes for that, and that's probably all the piece parts on that area. Then I go to the inside. Okay, let me uh, let me go find that one. There's a, a little better picture. And what what size router is that? Is that a, a Bosch? Yeah, it's the Bosch one quarter the Colt. What are we oh, called? Okay, those? so it's like a, a compact router then. Yeah, it's a small one. I wanted to go inside the drum. I really that was one of my big concerns is making everything tight against that gantry. Everywhere I could space save space to fit inside a a drum was I spent hours trying to think how I can make it tighter in there and it's, that was a big deal. So as it sits right now, what's the smallest drum you can get on the machine and carve the inside? The inside, I'm, I had a couple inches there. I'm thinking I could do maybe an 11 inch drum, wow. which on the inside wow. is 10 inches because it's half inch thick in the end. Right. That is pretty small. Yeah, that's my, that's my goal, but I haven't gotten that far. We're I'm still working on my very first. Well, I did a test drum that never ended up being a drum, but that right there is the first drum I've ever done. So, well, okay. one of the that was one of the questions I had on my list. But, um, let's see. I'm having sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to jump the gun. No, 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 that's that's fine. But 
I wanted to get to a picture where I, where you're showing. I guess you call this the the gantry. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not as old as I call the my, one question I had as I was watching your video, because like I said, this right here, it looks fairly tight in here. It don't look like you could go much smaller than than this one here. And I was just wondering if, because I know you've got this gantry, in order to get the drum on here, you loosen one end up and tip it up. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That's There's the eight bolts holding the gantry, four on each side. And I'll take off all four on the, the right hand side there and then three on the left hand side so i can actually it'll pivot it'll stand up i can lift it up and then i put the drum around it and put it back in place it's okay. kind of cumbersome but it, it works yeah well I, I i would assume there's no real super easy way to do what you're doing there that's uh you know you gotta have it supported on that other end um what let me let me back up a little bit here because uh, I'm I'm not even looking at my questions here. But what what made you you know what made this pop into your head and go this I'm going to des design and build one of these. Well, there's a lot of people do the same type of thing, but not on a CNC. They do it by hand. They'll get rollers and run a router through there on a little jig. So, I mean, I've never seen a CNC do this before, but I've seen people do these type process by hand so I can't say I'm 100% original on this but I've never seen a CNC like this before that these things it's, that's all original me but if you, if you Google um, I'm trying to think right words but skim interior drum router you'll you'll find some people doing similar things just by hand so I, I can't take credit for all, all that part of it but. Yeah, I uh, after I watched your video uh, the other day, I got on YouTube and just searched how are drums made or something to that effect. And of course, there's some videos on touring the Ludwig factory and the Yamaha factory and the DW factory, all these companies that make drums. But you don't even see anything that even resembles this. <laughs> I mean, this is a, a, a very unique uh machine uh, now uh, one thing i want to ask you too about this and i think i already know the answer but when you're doing the inside the drum is spinning and the router is just you know moving over real slow did you ever think about or is there a reason why you didn't do it the other way where you didn't have the drum moving indexing and the, and the X going back and forth that way. Didn't even consider that. Yes, this just made sense. Conceptually, before I even started designing, I was going to hold it in place. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I just figured that, you know, you've already got the drum spinning good with that, with that belt. So you would still need to spin it, even if you did it, you know, real, it's real small movements. But I was just wondering if it could be programmed to work that way as well. Um, Ray, Ray uh, Raymond had a uh, question. Uh, what is the deepest drum that you can uh, 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 make? And al along with that, I have a question. What what range of widths, or is it just one particular uh, inside and outside? I, I would imagine it's not. What, what range of widths can you make drum bass? Oh. I can width. I can go really wide. I, I don't know. I haven't measured that far, but bigger, bigger than any drum I ever would want. Um, actually, can I share a screen? I'll show you kind of what I just had on share deck or B carve. So yeah, we'll screen share. Screen share. Hey, Mike. Um, so here's V carve where I designed it all. So that's kind of the design I went with. You can see the side uh, angle. We're not seeing your screen. You're not sharing yet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Screen at the bottom of oh. yours, Rob. There we go. One more step. I'm clicking a button. Nothing's happening. I think Dave has to bring it up. 
Can you see me now? Uh, oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. So that's kind of, in theory, the size of the machine from the side angle there, all my designs. That's a 24 inch circle there. So in theory, I can do a 24 inch drone, though I haven't tried it yet, of course. Let's see. When I was playing around trying to figure out how to design it. So that's. So, it, how many drums have you made so far? Two. <laughs> Not many. And I want to get them finished. Right? There's so many little things that have to work before you go to the next step. So I want to really complete one 100% before I start making more. So right now I'm waiting for, I have to order some parts to finish this one to make so the rim fits exactly right. Little things like that. Because I don't want to start making and then realize there's a flaw earlier in the process that I want to redo. If that makes any sense at all. Yeah. So, um, so when you started making this, what was the most difficult part for you to design? Was there is there one part that was a lot harder than the rest to to figure out? How to do the inside was the interior was. Yeah, that was kind of a pain to figure that part out. Using that, I mean, that belt running around and getting attention fully, so the whole thing was, I kind of had my mind what I wanted to do, but actually getting to work was, I wasn't getting there. It took a long time to figure that part out. I really did that two or three times, getting that, that jig that holds it in place, did that multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how long did it take you to build this whole thing? Um, like conceptually to start the first cut, probably six months, but I only put a few hours a week into it. A lot more just conceptualizing my brain, how it's going to work, and doing that before actually a lot of thought went into every hour of actually working on it. But probably six months ago, when I started really getting serious about it. Now, I know this. Uh, 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 <laughs> doesn't make sense musically having a thick drum but uh they they asked the question there how much z uh z travel do you have and how thick of a drum could you theoretically make well how thick well if you had to start with thicker wood of course but optimally right. what i want is half inch thick at the edges and then of course i have that groove in there that goes down to a quarter inch thick at that point in the middle right it's kind of my sweet spot some people want a brighter sound. They want a thinner drum. I'm not sure if I, how thin it could really go. Let's say, let's say uh, you were. I mean, just uh, shot in the dark. Let's say you were you were making a completely different type of drum, more aesthetically pleasing, with uh, a bunch of. Uh, well, I don't know. If, yeah, I guess it could be done. Um, uh, designs and carvings on the outside, as opposed to. Uh, I mean, could you do something like that with the uh, with the machine, or is it strictly? Uh, no, I, I want I want to do that, and to be honest, that that's one of the issues I still have right now. Is in fact, at the very end of that video, I did you could see some designs of carving in it, some V carving, and right. there's a little there's a little slop in that. By the time you get this 14 inch drum down to that little gear driving it. It's just not, it's not perfect. Going on in circles is perfect, but repeatability and you carve something the first pass a little, you know, take an eighth or sixteenth out and the next one, another sixteenth. And it just doesn't. There's, really, no, there's no indexing for, to, for, for zero on, on the drum. It's just continuously rotating. Well, it, it goes back and forth to, okay. it starts and stops rotation and meat carving. We can't play the video, can we? But at the very end of the video, you can see it was trying yeah. to better. I think I can play the video, Rob. Let me uh, let me go find what you're talking about. Uh, Do I have to stop sharing? Or are we still sharing? Uh, no, you're not sharing anymore. Let's see okay. if I can find the right. Okay, to kind of piggyback off of that, uh, I would just my guess, you don't need a whole heck of a lot of Z travel, but how much Z travel do you have? Uh, three inches. Three inches? Maybe a smidge or three, but yeah. But I raised that carriage up and down, so I 
Right. If you include that, I've got a giant amount. But yeah, just up and down is about three. Okay. And the uh, consistency is pretty good over the uh, the whole width of the drum that you're cutting? Yeah. Okay. If, Not bad. if you uh, watch the video, each side, uh, there's a, on the carriage, you can rent your the uh, drawbridge, whatever you call it, thing. Mm -hmm. There's a threaded rod on each side to raise up and down, so you can, you can dial it in perfect, because the drum has to be exactly 13.875 on each side. Okay. So it's, it has to be that way, or else the drum head won't fit, or else it'll be too sloppy. So right, right. Okay, here's here's the one I was trying to show. Yeah. That three is a snakehead. There, he's been holding the drumsticks in his mouth. But it uh, when it recuts the, the line again, it's just it's off by a smidge. And I noticed that belt is not perfect. If, That would that be backlash in your belt system or yeah yeah okay and I'm sure I need to switch to something better but suddenly getting a a uh, I don't know what's the right word but to get this a fan you know a better rotary drive that's four or five hundred bucks to get a good one and I'm at this point I'm not sure I, I wasn't sure I wanted to spend that kind of money on this so. uh, Dave Keith is asking where the live is. Uh, on so Facebook, Facebook tweet, uh, Twitter, and uh, and YouTube. That's it. Not on Garage Work CNC by any chance. Uh, no, it it is supposed to be on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Twitch. I keep looking back over at Facebook, and I'm not finding it anywhere there. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened with Facebook, but it is live over on Twitch. Gotcha. However, there's nobody over there watching. That's why you yeah. don't see any comments from Twitch other than that one I did a while ago that was a test. So, isn't Twitch pretty much just for gamers? Well, yeah, but I mean, you can, you can, it's for any anybody that wants to live stream, but it's, it's primarily for, uh, for the gamers, I think. So. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Facebook. I'll have to uh, I'll have to do some investigating on that and find out. Anyway, I thought I would go ahead and, and show the uh, the lug, and you can tell us uh, you want to tell us about that, Rob. That's that was a. Uh, I mean, it looks pretty simple there, but yeah, at first I uh, used a uh, V point, and I cut out like a dozen at a time. But I cut a V-point on the, the top side, and then I flipped it over and did the exact same thing on the back side. So you can see the round over edge there. That's just all from the V, that. And then I cut the whole thing out then as an end mill. So that's three steps. Then I uh, flipped that to the previous screen now. I probably got photos of that on my side, too. So then I... Put in a little jig that holds it straight up. So you cut the pockets out for um, the bigger pocket there. A, uh, a square nut in there. Uh, yeah, a little square nut. Yeah. So I push a square nut in there. Little the uh, bolts of the tension rods will screw into. And the small hole is for the uh, thread of the insert. It goes in there. And there. I guess three inches, three and a half, I forgot it was, three inches apart. And then, of course, yeah, the holes will match up on there. And my design theory was that, of course, you get the the, v, the carve and the drum and should match the carve and the look to be kind of, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing. Look nice so you can see the, the same shape on both sides. Yeah. That's a nice uh, touch. That's I a nice detail. The, uh, the, you know, in your video, I saw where you're using uh and also to lay out the holes for these lugs yeah I, I guess that's working pretty good it looks like they're dead on to me yeah it worked perfect i was yeah it was perfect a okay. lot of people spent hours and hours getting those holes right exactly 20 degree you know our well every 10 lugs on there 
get exactly right and measuring it's been hours and hours and it really took five minutes for at those goals and they were spot on all right and i wanted to ask you too what software did you use to design this to to draw up your files vcarve all the way okay which is not 3d so it's kind of a yeah and what and what uh, post processor did you use to generate your code for this? I used uh, Linux CNC. I was exploring with um, with the Raspberry Pi, but it seemed like for rotary, it just didn't seem like it was the right the right solution. And I already use Linux CNC for my other machine, so you got to tweak it a little bit to make it work. And I've I haven't spent too much time on it. It works now. I can make it prettier and. Eventually, I have a turn. I have a, I'll use relays to turn on the machine, turn on the router, turn on the, the power supply for the steppers, which I already have that working on my other machine, so it will be that. Dave, I was doing some research. Uh, I I have a there's a possibility that Facebook uh, will put the stream on after we're done. That's what I've read. Oh, okay. I I thought it was supposed to be. Uh, it depends on what it depends on what program you're using. That some people in in other comment in other streams have done the same thing, and they and they said it goes live after. Well, <laughs> the the few folks that I've watched do their I watched one guy and he did a test. In fact, he was doing this exact same thing. He tried four places. He did YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope. And he got comments from Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So that tells me that Facebook is supposed to do it live. It's a simulcast type of thing. Yeah, must, be a, so, must be a setting in StreamYard. That. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, it's all re, uh, it's a third party thing that, that oh, StreamYard right. uses. It's called Restream. So you go set that up, and I have to you know, give it permission to restream everything to there. So I'll have to go back and check to see if there was something that uh, happened, but it should have been uh, should have been streaming all three places. And now that I now that I've done it once, I'll know not to go set up a YouTube event. Just wait until after the fact and go over there and edit that when I put the stuff in the description. Uh, I wanted to kind of somewhere in here. So I'm saying you have to, uh, he's guessing you have to take apart and uh, put back together the, the X axis to when you load and unload the drum. Uh, yeah, rod. yeah, exactly right. Okay. Yeah, from this shot, this is what I was talking about. It looks really tight in there on this one. Uh, yeah. Is that just some extra lead screw hanging down that could be cut off, or is that? That's lead screw. Yeah, I could cut that off if I need to. But okay, I think well, it actually, I guess it just makes it look closer than it is in between there and right up in here. Looks pretty snug. I'm, I'm still just amazed at the. Uh, yeah, how you how you dreamed all this stuff? This, this, it just blows me away. Well, a, a really smart guy once told me it, it's not rocket science. You heard that before? Uh, seems like I've heard that from somebody. I don't recall who, but uh, yeah. And and you know, a lot of times too, it's it's when you when you have an idea. Of course, I don't know how you did it using VCar Pro drawing this up. See, with me, it's different because I would use uh, 3D modeling software like, like SolidWorks. And sometimes you, you kind of got an idea and you don't know what's going to happen, but you just start drawing a part and then you draw another part. And since with that, you can make everything in an assembly, you can kind of design as you go. But with VCar Pro, that, that would be a little more difficult because it's kind of a lot of trial and error, I would think. Yeah, well, let me sh can I share my screen again. I'll show you how I, I got that screen pulled up on mine now. Okay. I it. Let's see. Yeah, Sorry, I came late. Rob, what what do you 
are you do you sell drums or do you no. do one for fun? Just for fun. I was I was a drummer years ago, and uh, sure, you could probably make a lampshade too. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people <laughs> mentioned things to, to do with it. Still on screen sharing, is it? It says I'm sharing. I think Dave has to approve the share. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm still getting used to this. I forget I have to click it here to make it. Uh, make it newbies. There we go. So that's my three parts there. I guess I. Uh, so that's kind of the top gantry part there, and I. My way of testing is to let me see what worked. I just. <laughs> Move parts back and forth, making sure it really fit. Uh huh. And then I had different parts. So here's the the, the uh, drawbridge, what I want to say, how it goes up and down. And then I had the router there, and I so I kind of visualized how far it would go up and down. You can see that's my line I was marking how my movement I had, where I was marking things. Yeah. So you designed that entire thing in V card. Yep. I kneel to the master. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh man. I can't even imagine doing that in V card. <laughs> and at one point I was planning on having holding that the uh, drawbridge in place with screws there. So I, I this is an old design here. I, I got rid of all those bolts. And just ended up using those four bolts on each side that clamped to that, that pocket there. So that's, I don't know, that's how I designed it. And then I've got a million different, uh, and I actually started cutting pieces. And you even indexed the side for different diameters of drum. Exactly. That's how I measured how I think I can do a 24. Yeah. I'll never do that's, a 24, but. I love that. Yeah, that, that's a nice touch. So yeah, you, can I, do a, you can do a 22 inch bass drum with no problem. That's my plan. Yeah, I, I mean, someday, I mean, I have a drum set already, but I'd like to build the whole drum set. So. Yeah. I sold mine, but I'm I'm a drummer from way back too. So I learned a long time ago never buy more drums than you can take to the pawn shop in one trip. That's probably a good rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, get room for that one. It's in the garage next to my CNC, all gathering dust. All right, now Rob, I, I haven't seen anybody ask this question yet, but I'm sure somebody will get around to it. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it. At this point, how much money do you have tied up in, in parts and, you know, of course, labor is free. That's always free, right? Uh, but just in parts and electronics and stuff. Labor it's, it's not as bad as I thought it might be. But of course, I've, I've, I had a war fund of like 800 bucks to do it with, and I've pretty much spent all that. But I redid several parts I wasn't happy with. I've got a bunch of pulleys, belts, and stuff. In fact, on the uh, those sides where I have the the, uh, the threaded rods raise each side up and down, I had a brilliant idea at one point to use uh, step motors to raise it up and down. And I actually bought some NEMA 17s and some basic stuff to use an Arduino to make that go up and down. And I didn't work very well, so I, I gave up on that. And went back to uh, just the using that uh, wrench just to raise it up and down. But, the things like that, I've a lot of trial and error. I messed up some things, recut sides, wasn't happy and stuff. But I could probably reproduce it for six six fifty, I think. Now, I'm Rob, not really that either. What's the minimum diameter of space you need uh, inside the drum? I imagine you have to start with a cylinder. You can't like start with a tree. And, right. And what's the minimum diameter you need to, for clearance? Well, I haven't really gone tested all that far but i a 10 inch hole i think which would be actually come out to an 11 inch drum probably i think i might be able to do that might be pushing it it might be a 12 inch drum with an 11 inch interior so you could basically cut a cut a uh a, 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 say a 10 inch cookie out of a tree get a 10 inch forstner bit drill a hole in the middle and make a drum out of it okay and I thought there's a there's a Facebook custom drum builder site out there that I belong to, and there's actually some people doing crazy stuff like that. I don't know how it wouldn't crack after time with a tree trunk like that, but there's a couple yeah. people trying that. 
And they're beautiful. They're, they look pretty now, but I got a feeling they won't last. I was joking, but that's that's funny that somebody would actually try that. Yeah, somebody's crazy enough to go to CNC like this, so I'm sure there's people crazy enough to do those other things too. Okay, now I'll, again, I got another question that I haven't seen anybody ask yet, and I'm sure if we wait long enough, somebody will. But do you or will you have plans available for this? I don't put much thought of that. I, if they, if someone wanted to build it, I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not going to try to sell it. I don't think. It, I'd probably give it what I have away, but. I, I don't want to put a lot of effort into actually designing the whole thing and drawing it out. But. And that dovetails into my main question, and that is, have the people from Yamaha or Ludwig been sure. calling you about this yet? Nobody's contacted me, but it's only been on Facebook or on YouTube for what, four or five days. Okay. No, I don't do it for so there's the new support Rob campaign. We all email Ludwig and them and tell them, no, 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 you got to buy it. <laughs> yeah, interesting enough, when uh, when I searched to see how, you know, like I just typed in how are drums made and I, I started watching these videos of, you know, DW and all the other manufacturers. And it seems like they all pretty much do the same thing, except for one one guy that was doing custom stuff. But everybody else, all the ones that were making the, you know, really cranking out the drum kits, uh, they all were using the, the laminate thing and then they put it in the mold and they squeeze it up and steam flies or they steam. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, they all had their own unique thing, but it was still pretty much the same kind from, from plant to plant for, at least from what I saw. Um, and, and that makes sense. You can make a lot thinner drum that way. And plywood's stronger. Obviously it's got the flies going different directions. So they can make a stronger drum thinner. Steve Neal just asked, uh, which uh, goes along with a curious question I had. Steve Neal is asking if you can make an angled drum, angled sides. And uh, someone, I think it was Mark, mentioned make a lampshade. How can you? <laughs> I mean, uh, a cone? In theory, I can, but there's not much that um, the drawbridge that goes down. I, mean, I can raise one side, lower one side, and, and do that. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty snug in there. I'm not sure how far. I could probably squeeze an inch, maybe two, an angle, but I couldn't do much more than that because it's so tight in there. It, would, it just wouldn't flex that far. But yeah, I, I, I definitely can. So I, when I built my first test drum, I'm it wasn't perfect. I, I'd be kind of curious. I mean, I uh, acoustics, I, I wouldn't begin to, to imagine, but I, I'm kind of curious how, say, a, a, a slightly convex or con well, concave convex shaped drum would would sound uh well just imagine a conga yeah. and i'm imagining some very nice yeah. laminated congas coming off of that yeah, yeah the outside of course you get well you have three inches play on the on the z-axis could do three inches easy getting inside would be a little tougher well i guess once the outside no i'm thinking out loud here it ain't gonna work too well <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do some segmented uh, drums, like different wood, or no? There's actually a guy that I'm friends with uh, uh, who's in Mesa, uh, not less than an hour away. He, he built some segmented drums. They're beautiful. And he's kind of approaching about maybe me turning his drum. He'll, he'll cut the segments, glue it all up, and I, I would cut his, just cut the outside and inside using my machine. So I, I might do some of his, but... They put a lot of work in those segments, you know, and he does beautiful mm. stuff. I can't think of the name of his business, but uh, he does some beautiful drums. Beautiful, like almost a Navajo design he does in each little segment. And I'm not sure how strong it would be. I'm always curious, the segment of the drums, if they're going in grain, end grain, I'm always worried how strong it would be pulling that up. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan asked if you were able to do 3D cards. I believe you answered that earlier. Uh, the, uh, you can, but uh, the precision, or rather the, uh, when you go over and over and over, it's, it's, uh, it's just. There's a bit of backlash. Yeah, and I was actually, 
Well, the solution might be using a laser to engrave over that. But suddenly, be, suddenly there's no back, well, there's no back much really too fast, but I think it'd be pretty repeatable that way. So I might put a laser on there someday and just design it that way. The other issue I'd imagine is if you, what, what is what is the track that it's running on? It's basically running on on a, on a on three wheels, one inner wheel and two outer. Is that correct? I mean the the what it, what drives the drum? There's a stepper motor with a uh, a tying pulley on it, and there's a a threaded rod through the middle. That uh, I use a picture. A threaded rod. That's the inside. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, find one that's the outside. Okay, so you got a belt. You got a belt. It's belt driven in the middle. That yeah, but that's just for cutting. That's just for cutting the inside of the drum. Got the you. outside. The, mm -hmm. So for the outside, yeah. Try to find a picture of the outside. Okay. When you drive the outside, uh, you you've got you've got something centered in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Because because I was it's, just. It's, it's a thread rod, a half inch thread rod goes gotcha. through the whole thing. I, for, for some reason or another, I thought there were two wheels and then one inner wheel. In other words, like you see on some of the on some rotary axes that are that are that are gripping the side, and that that would work because then the carving would completely mess it all up. There, that's good. So perfect. Gotcha. Okay. So there's a yeah, there's a time pulley on each side like that end. Belt and right on top. There's another tying pulley on a half-inch threaded rod. And I've got there. I'm talking about the uh, the bearings bolted in place to hold it steady, so it can't move back and forth, left and right. There. And then when I put a drum there. I have to put that through the middle, so I, I just bolt it right there and bolt it back together. Gotcha. So, so you basically, so, so when you first do the, you do the outside first. Yes, definitely. And then, and then all you have is a center hole in between that that's what it pivots on. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I've got two uh, circles I cut that are exactly that 13.875 that I want the drum to be that have a half inch hole. Put them on there, put a bolt on each side of them with the threader rod, tighten it up, and then on the night screw the, uh, the bolt so it tighten on the drum so it's drawn in place. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But you could, in essence, um, I mean, if I mean, uh, it'd be crazy. But if if you really wanted to get uh, uh, some fancy carvings on it, you could actually do the leave leave this machine for the inside, and you could do the outside with some sort of a uh, a CNC lathe, uh, just a standard CNC lathe. I would imagine, right? Can't you only do a, a circle around that? I mean, on the, the rotary side, but if you want to go on the, say, the x axis on a, a lathe, you can't go back and forth that way to get this height, can you? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, with a, with a rotary, I mean, with a rotary, uh, basically, you turn the draw, it's, it's, you unfold the cylinder into a, into a rectangle. That's how you draw it up, and, and it's, uh, it's simply the rotary is is x and the uh, I'm sorry y and the uh, and the gantry is x. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I like how V card on the new nine point five you can do rotary stuff. Yeah, I, I, that's how I drew out the lug rules when I designed that and stuff. And gotcha. Yeah, I was playing with a lot of designs, but again, so I can get that backlash. I can even do some basic designs so I would get a single pass. They would be fine, but. Once I want to go deeper and get pockets that are going back and forth, it seems like it's just not repeatable. It's it's in development yet. Yeah, and I'm I haven't given up on that, but I'm already I'm like 95 percent of the way of what I wanted this machine to do, so I'm I'm pretty happy with it. For what you did and for what it's made, it's absolutely incredible. It really I think it's is. awesome. I really think it's awesome. It is. Yeah. Frankie's CNC and we're working channel has a question here. He says, so couldn't you make one that the drum turns on a turntable and use a CNC that the router faces the same direction as the Y axis so you can lower the router for inside and out? 
certainly you could. I mean, that's, I think you guys have done that before for basics, but the, to get a big drum like that, you'd have to cut a big notch out of your CNC machine to be able to do a, a 14, let alone a 24 inch drum. Yeah. But I know Mark's got a big slot cut on his to do those type of thing. Yeah, but um, to be honest with you, if I had it to do over again, I'd have made that a lot wider because I'm very, very limited as to what I can get between centers. That's I mean, that's how I cut my machine too I did it yeah. years ago, and I had visions of doing a rotary on that machine, but I never, I never did. So I'd be able to cut something bigger. But when I cut those lugs to put the hole on the each end for the thread rod to go through, I use my machine going up and down on that the out of that slot so I could yeah, sure. it makes sense it makes sense probably but, but uh, yeah I was that's why I cut the the holes for those nuts to do into on the, the lugs. Uh, nice little kick for that. Did ten at a time. I, I wanted to ask you too uh, Rob for this particular drum that's in this picture uh, what kind of feed rate are you running and uh you know on, when you're doing the outside and is the feed rate similar when you're doing the inside i was doing i think oh gosh i think it was four turns per minute it's all in degrees so it gets kind of funky right. of course but uh it was moving a pretty good clip i, I kept jumping the speed up i never did get any chatter or anything so i was happy with it yeah, yeah, I know some videos. What video was the diameter? Pretty good. What was the 14 inches. 14. 13.875. You call it a 14 inch drum. Okay, so 45. We're looking at uh, four per minute. So about 12 inches per minute. Does that sound right? I don't remember. I kept on just adjusting the speed up and kept on speeding it up. I don't know the exact number at the end. 12 inches a minute sounds, it seems like it was faster than that, but I, I could be wrong. That's it. By the way, I did all that code. The G code for this, I just did an Excel spreadsheet. It was uh, pretty easy because usually when you do a rotary project, the drum, the CNC wants to stop at 360 degrees and keep turning back and forth, left and right. Mm -hmm. and I kept turning and turning and turning and turning. And I had to go in the settings for Linux, which I assume the same type of thing for, for Mach 3. But like you have your, your bed size. A regular CNC you set up on there. You set up your degrees also, and I finally set up like two hundred thousand degrees before it stops, so I could cut this whole circle time and time again. But the G code is actually pretty simple. I can show you the spreadsheet if you want to see that or not. And and this this drum here, and I know we've got a, I think I've got a picture of it mostly finished, and I think you've got one right there with you. Got right That's that drum sitting next to me. Yeah. Uh, but when this one gets done, what what does it weigh, and what is the wall thickness when you get through with it? I have no idea on the weight. It's not. It doesn't feel that heavy to me. But I have. I'm not even going to guess on that. But the wall thickness is the thickest part is a half inch, and then as that groove in the middle, it's down to a quarter inch at that point. Wow. So, yeah. And the con and the consistency is pretty good on it. Yeah, yeah, it came. It's beautiful. I mean, I hardly had to sand it to get the. Uh, mm -hmm. that oh, nice. But like I say, at this point right here, it's a half inch thick, and then this, this, here it's a quarter inch. Wow. That's gorgeous. That's an absolutely gorgeous. Just too too cool for school, Rob. I tell you what, I love it. And that finish came out really nice too. I was. Yeah, it did. I'd seen it's just um, it's oak, and I used um black dye, wood dye, not, not stain, but dye. Mm -hmm. I covered it and then I sanded it back off. And just, yeah, was, I'd seen that effect before, I didn't know I could do it. I, I took a chance on a new drum doing that. I was real happy with it. And how does it sound? I don't have, it's, I need to order smaller lug, uh, the lugs I have in here, the, uh, I'm sorry, the tension rods, the screws. Yeah. They're too long, or they're too long. So once I go in, I start hitting the, um, those threaded inserts to hold it into. So I've, I've got to get a shorter threaded rod to actually tighten it up. Because oh, right okay. now it's, it's nothing. It's, I can't get it tight enough to get a good sound. And I still have to 
the snare assembly too on it, which okay. is in the garage for me for me to attach it. Okay. Well, I was interested in how it turned out because Oak has a reputation for being kind of dead, but uh, I didn't know how it would work out in a drum. I tend to like more of a jazz dark sound in my uh, drum instead of a bright okay. rock and roll. So I, it should be a, a darker sound, I'm thinking. So. Yeah. How tight is the head seal on that? I have no idea on the PSI or uh, the pounds, but no. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, is it, oh. is it uh, relatively speaking, is it pretty tight? Uh, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's a bit of slack, but it's pretty tight. It's, it's what I wanted. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. again, the, the head itself is 14 inches, and the drum is 13.75, so you had a sixteenth of an inch on each side, mm -hmm. and it's. It came out right. It fits just how I wanted it to. I think this was a snare, right? I'm sorry? This was a snare drum you made? Yes, yeah. That is too cool. Fantastic. All right, I've got uh, just a couple more questions here. Um, one, let's see. Is there anything you would change about this design if you made another one of these machines? Or have you played around with this one enough to know? I've done several iterations on, especially that carriage that's for cutting the inside. I've made several iterations on that. It's, actually, I still want to do, I only have uh, two wheels on top to hold the drum more steady. So on the top where you see that belt going around, the belt's holding it in place. I think I want to get um, some pressure on top, pull it down a little tighter, so it, doesn't, it can flex a little bit if it hits a, uh, the router. It's in a hard spot. For some reason, it, it, it'll move a little bit, slight movement. I want to pull it tighter. Do that. Um, the belt system, is, again, there's a slack in it, so I, I might want to go with some kind of direct drive or gear drive and still those belts when I'm cutting the on the outside of it. I'm not sure. I, I'd like to hear that slack, but I'm not going to put much effort into it for a while. This, like I say, it's almost where I want it, so I'm not going to do too much with it. And I'm curious if a direct drive will work with uh, a stepper motor going straight to that thread rod. If it doesn't have power, I'm not sure. Some experts like you guys tell me if that would work. I know my rotary axis does use timing belts, and it's a six to one ratio. So, what is your what what kind of final drive ratio are you working with? Four to one. Four to one. Okay. I've had a hard time finding the right. I, mean, I think my drive on my stepper is eight millimeter. I think mm -hmm. it might be ten millimeter. I think it's eight. But um, and then a half or yeah, half inch on the threaded rod. So I had a hard time finding the pulleys to would yeah. work right, the, the sizes and I don't know, yeah. I'd like to have a bigger pulley on the uh, stepper motor, I think that would help me a little bit. Yeah, timing belt pulleys are, you know, you, you can, there are a few sources, but you really have to dig for them. I mean, I went through that trouble too when I was setting up my rotary axis. Yeah, and it's it's XL belt size, which isn't right. real big. But again, I, I don't, I didn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars just getting belts for a system I wasn't sure it was going to work. Right. So I, gotcha. I went, but I, now I know it'll work, I might end up getting a bigger belt on that, or if, if I can find something to work. The, the ironic part is uh, I was just thinking of the, the, the irony that uh, if you build a CNC lathe, uh, you could actually cut your own timing pulleys <laughs> for a CNC lathe. It's it's one of those it's one of those wonderful tools that that you can use it to reproduce itself. But but you need one. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think it's cooler than heck. That's just all there is to it. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of great comments over there in the chat. Everybody's digging it. But you know what, guys? It's after nine, and we've got a guitar to give away. So. Uh oh. I'm going to Rob. Are you still sharing your screen by any chance? I don't think so. Oh, it says, yeah, stop sharing. There we go. Sorry. That's okay. I'm going to uh, 
get some stuff set up over here real quick for the drawing. Yeah, they're commenting. Uh, Skip likes the black dye, uh, as do I. It's it's fantastic. Dyes yeah, are a lot know, of fun to play with. I just I ran out of words to say how impressive it is. I really, I really have because it it is it is a nice piece of of art of music of of creativity. Uh, it's 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 fantastic. Yeah, I was, kind of, I was afraid of that black dye. To be honest, I I was not sure. I'd seen some videos online. Actually, the store I go to in Phoenix does a lot of videos, and the guy there had used black dye, and he mixed it with uh, one of the uh, oil-based, not oil-based, but uh, thinner and whatnot, and he, he had like 10 steps, and he came out beautiful. I went to the same store, and the other guy said, well, that general finishes black dye wa uh, water-based, and it's it's almost as good. It's really tough to into it, and I tried it. It's so easy. It's water-based, everything. No mixing, just watch. I did, I cut it down for later steps. To, I did multiple coats, I kind of watered it down towards the end to get the effect I wanted, but a lot easier than I thought. I was, I was scared using that, that dye, but it was, oh my God, it's a lot of fun. I like working with dyes. Yeah, that was the first time for me, and I'm, I will get some more. Yeah, that, that thing is just, I know when I first saw it i'm sure my mouth was just wide open watching it because it was just it just blew my mind and and it kind of reminds me of this is gonna sound silly maybe but it kind of reminds me of a a dryer you know how your clothes dryer has that belt that runs around and turns the drum and it sits on some some idler yeah. wheels and stuff and i thought yeah but that's way cooler than a dryer oh yeah <laughs> Just way cooler. Uh, just so impressed, Rob. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing the, the stuff with you. Everybody that's watching out there, um, we had a little hiccup at the beginning, and the, it, I'm sure it was my fault. Um, but Restream decided to uh, Restream to YouTube on a different event than the one I'd set up. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to set that one up. So right now there's nothing in the show description, but as soon as this is over, I've got it all. I was, I had it, I'm prepared in case that happened. I, I've got it all copied and pasted in a notepad so I can grab it and sling it over there and paste it in. So there will be links to uh, Rob's video. Uh, you know, if you haven't uh, seen it, just look, look up Rob Schuster, just like it is on the screen there uh, in YouTube and um, Check it out because it is it is an amazing piece of engineering, I have to say. Thank you. I just I just reposted it on the chat. Just in case. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, well let's uh like I said, it's a little bit after nine. Let's go ahead and give this guitar away. Uh we've got eighty five people watching. We had oh uh, let's see, what was it? Let me look and see here. 56 people entered, so I will now share my screen and we'll do this. Uh, a wonderful wheel of guitar fortune. All right, so yeah, this is, uh, well, it's called Wheel of Names, but I put numbers in there because I didn't want to write out all those names. So, folks, as as the wheel will turn, I want everyone to watch Dave's head in the middle. <laughs> yeah, uh, you'll get dizzy watching watching that. But anyway, we're we are. Um, well, I guess I can still see me in the corner. We're drawing for this guitar here. Uh, it's got a Tennessee plate on it right now. But as I've said before, if you live somewhere else and would like a different plate as long as i have a play you can go to my website and choose from uh i got photos of every plate everybody's ever sent me uh you can pick one and i will swap it out for you so at any rate i've got the uh, one through 56 numbers on the wheel over here uh it's all shuffled and you can see it continues to shuffle uh but we'll spin it 
and whoever the number points to, I'll call out that person's name. And they have, I need to get my phone set up ready here. We'll, we'll give them 90 seconds because I don't think the latency is very bad over there in YouTube. Uh, so let me get that set up. I'll type it in when you say it. Let's see here. <laughs> Drew came late to the party. He missed the uh, the drum CNC machine. Okay, so a minute and 30 seconds or 90 seconds from the time I call out the name. So first we'll spin the wheel. Here's everybody ready? Ready. All right, I see some... Uh, some new folks, I think, over there in the, in the chat. But here we are. We're going to spin the wheel. You, did you drum roll through there? <laughs> well, we, yeah, we, we know a drummer now, don't we? Uh, all right, let's, let's spin the wheel, and I'll call out the first name here. <laughs> you see his white hair spinning all over the place. That's great. All right, so 16. Is that 16 or 15? I can 16 is Jim Senecola. Oh, boy. Let's see if Jim is. I thought he was out there earlier. I'm pretty sure he was out there unless he uh, stopped he watching. Was. Now, what are you trying to get a copyright strike? Oh, bum, 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 bum. how's that? That's better. <laughs> <laughs> we must be serious. After all, this is not child's play. Okay, there, there he is. Yeah. Says, yes, there. I am here. <laughs> so, congratulations. Man, he made it in record time, too. Oh, uh, I'm sorry you did not phrase that in the form of a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird because on a lot of the other stuff I give away, there's always uh, he's trying to call in. <laughs> I don't know, but he's already he's already answered in the chat, so we're good. Uh, all right, well, congratulations, Jim Senecola. And I think it's odd because he... Uh, you know, I had actually sent him a link to be on the panel and he was late and didn't, you know, got in late, said he was on the on the river. So, um, you know, I just happened to notice him in the chat a while ago. So congratulations, okay. Jim Senecola. Uh, let me know what plate you want on this thing and I'll get it sent to you. All right. Okay, well, does anybody have any final questions for uh, Rob before we get out of here? He answered all of my questions. I'm and pretty much exhausted myself. That's, that's I'm awesome. serious. Yeah, I, I've been putting a mark beside all of mine as either I ask him or somebody else asked it and it got answered. So I think they, we got... Uh, Got them all answered, but but like I say, thank you so much, Rob, for for coming on here and sharing that. Now, I noticed. Can you hold that up again? The the one you got down there. Okay. So now, did you make those? I guess the rims. Is that what they're called? I did. I did. So no, I did those on regular CNC. Okay. So will there be an upcoming video out on those as well, or? I didn't make a video of that one, but there might be someday. But okay, okay. That's uh, that's just. I tell you, the whole thing is just. I shot some video making the lugs, so I, I might do that one. Today, but okay. that would be the next normal evolution. Would be the lugs and then the rim. Yeah, yeah. The lugs were kind of cool because 
I used a, I built a, a jig for it so I could do 10 at a time. And oh, a learning great. experience. So it was, yeah, I, the first time I did it one at a time, it's a 30 second cut for each little pocket, but then it takes two or three minutes to switch it out each time. And yeah. I wasted a lot of time. <laughs> My dog's barking at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. My usually it's mine. I got I got one laying here, and I don't know where the other one is. But they they hear something outside, and all hell breaks loose. So <laughs> she barks a funny thing. She watches baseball. The baseball game's on right now, and somebody made a hit, and she started barking. Just, I guess we get excited, so we get a hit. So <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I guess we're going to sign off here. We've been on here. Well, I guess about an hour, considering we got lost on that first few minutes. <laughs> so um, thanks, everybody, for making the switch. We still had like 80-something folks, well, almost 90 folks watching this uh, earlier. You know, I appreciate y'all, you know, finding the, the live. Can somebody put in the comments that w did you get a notification of any kind to say that I was live and if, and if so, was that the right live or was that the, the first one? You shouldn't have got one, I guess, for the first one. Cause it never really went. Well, actually I received two. Oh, did I, you? I did. I, I did receive both. When you set up the first one and just about the time you sent me the inside link, I got the, the first notification. That's when everybody was typing in the chat room. As soon as you went live, I got the second notification. So that's when the new YouTube stream started. Okay. Which, confusing. Well, it, was, uh, it was the same with me. I got a uh, notification that you were going live at the old one, and then I got a notification that you were live at the new one. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to ask around to some of these other guys that I've seen do these tests and and getting this successfully so i don't know what happened to the facebook stream we got no stream out of facebook at all um hey, dave says nobody gave you a thumbs down this week <laughs> not on the new one <laughs> yeah they wasted they wasted those they wasted theirs. <laughs> okay now just for clarification that was not a challenge all right y'all <laughs> that's okay they're not listening they're already gone but anyway, uh, it does work on Twitch. So, uh, you know, I'll be in the future. I'll be, I'm just trying to put the show out there to, to just anybody. Cause I know there's a lot of people that believe it or not, don't, don't do YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that do Facebook. Ronald also received two notices. So, okay. Well, that's, uh, Okay, so the second one was the correct one. Okay. Yes. All right, so I guess I've still got to figure out what went wrong with Facebook, why it didn't work. But I know what what I did wrong then is because when I when I did the stream last week, I only streamed it to YouTube. And you set you set the stream up with StreamYard. And then when I went to YouTube, it created an event. So I could go in there and edit the event that it created, put in the description and stuff, and all that worked great last week. But when you do simulcasting to different places, you you Yeah, you gotta let Restream do it. You you go to Restream and you have to set up, you tell it, you know, you have to connect it with your accounts. You know, you say I want Facebook, um uh, uh, Twitch, YouTube, and the rest. I think he took himself out of the thing. I think he did. Well, he'll be back. Um, just letting folks know. Uh, I see a lot of folks out there. I see a lot of folks out there in the chat saying they didn't get a notification. If you even if you click that bell button on your phone or your tablet or something, if you have it set to quiet all notifications, you won't get a notification. So you have to set your phone to accept notifications from YouTube as well. Same with your tablets. Yeah. Because if you have the notifications turned off in the master on your phone for everything, 
you won't get any notifications. Yeah, Keith Painter got two as well. Well, I misspelled test. I left the T off, but yeah. So that's still working with Twitch. It's just that there's apparently nobody over there, which I'm not surprised that, uh, because I, I never use Twitch. I've had an account a long time, but I never, never Me really. Either. But anyway, I will find out what's going on with Facebook and uh, see if we can get that straightened out. And now that I know that Restream starts a different thing, I won't go over and set up an event on YouTube. I'll edit it after the fact, which is what I'm going to have to do now uh, when we close out here. But anyway, I want to thank everybody that, that hung around and, and watched this and made the went to the trouble to move. Um, thank you a bunch. Uh, thanks for all the thumbs up. Um, Thank you, Javi, for uh, joining me tonight. Uh, Mr. Happy to help. Um, oh, I see we've got the guitar winner. Hey. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Welcome. Hey. Boy, I just made it in from the river, man. I was out on the river today. Well, you got here just in time and, and you know, like I said, I, well, the, I can't remember what the winning number was, but well, let's see. It was sixteen. So you had 16. entered a while back. Yeah, I entered. I, I entered right after the last thing. Because I remember I asked you that question. If I enter, is it in the next one? You know. Yay. Yeah. Well, it worked. You know, anytime somebody enters, like I always check when I'm making my list. I always do a quick search to see if I've already put. Because sometimes people like right after a drawing they'll enter and then when it gets closer to the drawing, they go, I don't remember if I entered or not. So they enter again, but I always make sure everybody's just got one entry in to make it fair. Uh, but yeah, you got in, got in here in the, in the chat just in time. So anyway, we're going to get out of here. Um, Jim, well, you don't have to leave cause we're going to be hanging around here a little while after this is over. Okay. But, thank you. But uh, congratulations again on winning. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Javi. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Rob, for uh, just a great show, showing all that, that cool engineering stuff. I, I love it. I was uh, glad to be here. It was cool. Thank you all, and we will see you all later. Everybody have a great weekend.